The first thing I want to do is install the back plate for our CPU cooler. So we're going to make sure each of these corners is pulled to the outer setting for our LGI 1700 socket. And then it's just a matter of lining this up with the holes in the back of the motherboard. We've then got one of these standoffs to go on to each corner. If you've got an AMD motherboard, the first thing to do is remove the clips at either side of the CPU. They're each held on with two screws. We then need to set one of these brackets, one at the top and one at the bottom. There's a little arrow pointing towards the CPU to help you decide which way to orientate it. And we can then secure it into place with the four screws we've just removed. So this is one of my favourite features about this cutter. You'll notice the spacing we have on the motherboard matches up with our Intel bracket. So we're going to have the one bracket on our CPU cutter pump and we're going to be able to put it onto either motherboard without needing to change the bracket on the pump. We're now ready to start working on our I.O. and the first thing is to join our fans together. If we take a look at one of our fans, you'll notice we've got little connectors on either side of it. So on this side, the little connectors protrude. And on this side, we've got little indentations. So all we need to do is line our fans up together. And if we bring them close together, they're going to magnetically attach just like that. And like that. And that's all three of our fans connected up. We've got two cables that come with our fans to connect them up, but we're only going to use one depending on which side of the fans we want to connect them to. So you can see here we've got female connectors here and male connectors here. And if we take a look at our fans, you can see on one end we've got a female connector and the other end it's a male connector. So depending on which end of the fans we want to put the connector on, all we're going to have to do is pick the right connector and then just hold it up at the end of the fans and it's going to magnetically attach. And again, if we wanted to connect onto the other end, it's just using the other cable, lining it up and letting it magnetically connect into place. If we take a look at the connectors coming from the other end of the cable, we've got a four pin PWM connector, which is going to go into our CPU fan header, allowing our motherboard to control the speed of the fans and power the fans. The other cable is a three pin five volt ARGB cable, and this is going to control the lighting on the fans and we can either plug this directly into our motherboard or because our case is a built-in ARGB hub, we can plug it directly into that. If we take a look at our pump, we've got two cables coming from it. The first is another four pin PWM connector. This is going to go into our pump header on the motherboard, allowing the motherboard to not only power the pump, but adjust its speed. The other cable is a USB cable and we're going to plug that into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard and that's going to let us use Asus's armory crate to control what comes up on this LCD screen. So this screen is attached to our pump magnetically and all we need to do is pull it off and that's going to make the installation a little bit easier. We can then set our fans onto the radiator and then we're going to use these long radiator screws to secure the fans to the radiator. Then we can set our case's radiator bracket into place. If the case you're using doesn't have a detachable radiator bracket, you're simply going to have to line the radiator up in the case where you want to install it. And then we're going to use these short radiator screws to secure the radiator to the bracket. We can then set our radiator into place at the top of the case and I'm just going to pass the cables coming from the fans through to the back as we lower the radiator down into place. At the top of the case we can then secure the radiator bracket with a thumb screw. I'm then going to plug the ARGB cable coming from the fans and the radiator into our ARGB hub. If your case doesn't have an ARGB hub you can simply plug this cable into an ARGB header on your motherboard. There's two fan headers at the top of the motherboard. The one over to the left is our CPU fan header. So I'm going to bring the PWM cable coming from the fans and the radiator through line it up with a header and push into place and then pull the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to install our pump onto the motherboard and there's some plastic protection on the back that we need to remove. So you'll notice there's thermal place pre-applied to the cold plate so we just need to take care not to damage it and we don't need to add any more. So another thing that I like to do when installing the I.O. is this is the bottom of it and I like to wrap any of the cables that are going to work their way up to the top of the motherboard just along the I.O. when I'm setting it into place. And I'm also going to take the cable coming from the LCD screen and set it into place as well. So we can go ahead and line our CPU cooler up with the bracket on the motherboard. And once we're happy everything's lined up, we just need to get a thumb screw onto each corner. So there's two different types of thumb screws that come with the I.O. 
Because we've got an LGA 1700 socket, we're going to use this plain thumb screw. If you've also got an AM4 motherboard, this is the one you're going to want to use as well. Well, if you've got an AM5 or LGA 1200 socket, this is the one you're going to want to use with the line in the middle of the thumb screw. Next I want to return the pump cover and as I do I'm just going to pull the cable up to the top. Our pump header is just this one here to the right of our CPU fan header. So I'm going to bring the PWM cable coming from the pump and plug it into the header. And then the excess cable I'm just going to bring through to the back of the case. I'm also going to pass our USB cable through to the back. We've got two USB 2.0 headers down at the bottom of the motherboard. So we can bring our cable through the cutout and get it plugged into one of the headers. We can then remove the plastic protection from the screen. So taking a look at our temperatures, our i7-13700K idled at 37 degrees and reached a maximum of 89 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. The average noise level was 34 decibels at idle and 51 decibels under load. So to adjust the effects on our cooler, we're going to need to click on the device and click on our AIO. So we can see by default we've got a customised slideshow in place and this is the one that's on the display. We've got a range of different slideshows here we can choose from, so if we want to pick a different one, we'll click on it and click on Apply. And you'll see that it'll now be appearing on the cooler. It is also possible to upload your own files, so all you're going to do is hit on the Upload and then select the file that you want. It'll take a little while to upload, but once it's done, you can then click on it and click on Apply. And you'll see it's now appearing on the cooler. If you don't want an animation, you can go for a wallpaper. And again, we've got some still options. I'll just click on one and click on apply. Alternatively, you can upload your own file. Here's one I've uploaded already, so I can select it and click on apply. The other option that we have is to have the time appearing on the I.O., so we'll try that. And we can also have it as a hardware monitor. So we click on hardware monitor. Um, we've got different options, so at the moment it's set to triple info. So we've got the CPU temperature, the voltage, and also the frequency appearing. So we'll click on apply. And you'll notice this information is now appearing on the AIO. So if instead of voltage I wanted to have our GPU temperature, that's possible as well. We'll just do that and click on apply. And again, we've got a couple of different themes here. We can have the Cyberpunk theme. Or you can make your own custom theme if you prefer. The other option that we have is to adjust the fans. Um, and we've got two fans that we can adjust in here. So the pump itself, and um, we've got our fan curve down here. We can obviously change it or set up our own custom curve. We can also adjust the fan that's built into the pump. And again, control it as well.